My name is Hank Cullen. I'm fortunate to be the current chairman of Kenneth Taub. And I wanted to thank each and every one of you for being here today and taking time out of your schedule. I'm quite impressed with our turnout today, which really goes to show how important uh, the issue, or I guess the opportunity that we're going to be talking today about is. As most of you are aware, we are home to a vibrant automotive industry, including folks like BMW and many of its suppliers, as well as one of the top tire manufacturers in the world, Michelin. The upstate is a region where transportation and mobility are vital to our everyday life and our economy. How we move people and goods across the upstate is a topic many have been discussing and working on for quite a number of years. As our region continues to grow, the challenges also grow, and the importance of having clarity for how we are working individually and collectively on this issue becomes more and more important. Connecting Our Future is an initiative designed to bring together all of the individual efforts around mobility. Mobility is not just not just about fixing our roads, which is very important, and transportation in the upstate. Creating a vision and actionable strategies will hopefully help us keep the ball moving and eventually lead to measurable success in addressing congestion and access accessibility to transportation. For this effort to be successful, it will take a strong coalition of individuals organizations committed to making a positive impact around this critical issue. Thank you for taking the first step in coalition building by taking your time today to be with us. I encourage you to stay involved throughout this effort as it will likely go well beyond this year, next year, the next year, and probably we need to be talking about it on an ongoing basis as we make progress. I encourage you to get involved with the follow-up groups that will come out of this or follow-up effort and stay connected um, amongst all the stakeholders who are committed to the upstate and to impacting transportation and mobility in this region. So with that, we've got a, a very, uh, very bold program today. I'm excited about it. And so I'm going to bring Dean up uh, this time. Well, good morning and again thank you for being with us today. This is an important day um, for uh, the upstate and for, for us in, in this discussion. Um, I want to start with kind of painting a picture or asking you to imagine with me because everybody I think you're, you're wondering so why are we here today? What's the purpose? Well, let's imagine that you got up this morning, no matter where you live, whether you live in Greenville or Greer or Spartanburg or Gaffney or Greenwood or Seneca or places in between. And no matter how much you make per hour, what your income level is, whether it's $10 an hour, 12, 15, a lot more. And when you woke up this morning, one of the things you did not have to worry about was how you were going to get to wherever you were going, whether it be your job or to an appointment or to school, to training, to go into a store, whatever it was. Now, I know most of us have our individual vehicles. We're fortunate in that. So for us, at least from a standpoint of reliability, we were covered this morning. But I bet many of you also spend a little bit of time on our parking lot known as I-85. Or 385, depending on where you're going, or 29, or 123, or 153. We have a lot of parking lots with numbers here in the upstate. And that number of parking lots with numbers is continuing to grow. So even if you have your own personal vehicle, it was not you, you today, did not get here as easily as I want you to envision getting in the future. And then also, there are many people in our region who just don't have access on a daily basis to their own, to a vehicle. 
Um, and for them, it's an even more significant issue because they don't have access maybe to a job, or if they have a job, they have to take one that maybe doesn't pay as well or they're overqualified for it because it's closer to where they live or where they can get to. Um, maybe they can't get to doctor's appointments, they can't get to other things, um, they can't go shopping easily on their schedule. So transportation, both congestion and access to transportation are huge issues for this region. So imagine if we can create a region where those are no longer barriers, those are no longer issues. That's why we're here. I believe that's why all of us are here. To start talking about, or continually talking about, because we know, as Hank said, there have been discussions around this issue for a long time, a lot of smart people. But we've got to move, keep moving down the road, so to speak, not to be pun on that, but we've got to keep moving. And this effort is designed to be part of that, to bring us together and figure out where we are, where we want to go, and how we get there. So I've been here about eight years in the upstate, almost. And the time I've been here, I hear so often that we don't want to be Charlotte and we don't want to be Atlanta. How many of you have said or heard those words? Yeah, basically everybody. Um, the Shaping Our Future initiative, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more in a few minutes, also said the same thing, that we see that we don't want to be Charlotte and we don't want to be Atlanta. But Shaping Our Future also told us that most of our the current things we're doing, most of our investments, most of our plans, most of, of our initiatives are sending us right down that path. So at some point, We've got to either say, okay, we're going to be Charlotte or or we've got to start doing something different. It, always, it, it almost makes me think of, you know, The Wizard of Oz and Dorothy, where she's like, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, and she just starts, you know, hoping she's going to be back in Kansas. Well, you know, we don't have a magic wand. We can't say, we don't want to be Charlotte, we don't want to be Atlanta, we don't want to be Charlotte, we don't want to, want to be Atlanta, and one day the magic wand says, poof, okay, you're not Charlotte, you're not Atlanta. We actually have to do things if we want to not be Charlotte and Atlanta. And this effort is designed to bring together the efforts that are happening. Because we know that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We've got to start doing things differently. We've got to understand what those challenges are, what the issues are, what the opportunities are, what the, the disruptive technologies coming our way are. How do we do that? How do we make the upstate the place I ask you to imagine as it relates to transportation and mobility a minute ago? So one of my favorite elected officials who was in this room said something one time at a meeting that I thought was wonderful. And I think it fits very much with what we need, to, how we need to be approaching this process. And he said, I don't go to Home Depot because I want to get a drill. I go to Home Depot because I have a picture or a, a cabinet or something I want to hang, and I need a whole drill or a hole made, and so the drill is the tool. Well, our transportation efforts, all these things we're talking about, they're the tools. This effort and any effort around transportation <coughs> can't specifically only be about one thing. It's not while the roads are important, and I applaud and, and want to say that the framework that was done by our elected officials and by our chambers to get a greater investment uh, at the state level for our roads was critical, and you'll hear a little bit about that. That was important, but that's just a tool. All the other things that, you know, whether it be around buses or other types of mobility or um, personal rapid transit or all the other things that you'll hear some of today, they're all important, but they're all tools. The goal isn't to have one or the other or multiple. The goal is to move people and goods from place to place and to do it easily, efficiently, and affordably. So if we can remember what the goal is, what we're trying to accomplish, then we need to be talking about the tools and what those strategies are. 
And this effort is about identifying the strategies, some that already are being done and exist, and some that we haven't even thought about today, and how we can move forward on those efforts. I want to talk a little bit about land use, because you know, this is a critical time for our region if we don't want to be Charlotte and we don't want to be Atlanta. Many of you were involved in the Shaping Our Future initiative. And what we saw is we have a population of about 1.42 million people. And from the beginning of time to 2015, we developed about 725 square miles for our developed footprint here in the upstate region. Okay? 725 square miles from the beginning of time to 2015. According to the study, and the, the models that they ran, if we continue our current trend of how we're using land, we will use more land, 920 square miles, from 2015 to 2040, than we used from the beginning of time to 2015. Now, I, I, I'm not an expert in this field, but that doesn't seem to be good land use practices. So, and, and it doesn't really matter if that number is off by 20 square miles or 50 or even 100. The point is, if we don't start doing things differently, then we are going to end up being a Charlotte for an Atlanta. And in reality, we're going to end up being three Charlottes because the 920 square miles is greater than if we develop three more Charlottes. There, uh, the square mile footprint in Charlotte proper is 297 square miles. So if we continue down our current path, we won't have just one more Charlotte, we'll have three more in the upstate region. And so transportation is one of those areas that is very easy, I should not say easy because that's not true, it is one of those areas that if we can do things differently, it will have measurable impacts. So that's why Ted the Top and the partners that are part of this process, the coalition, said we've got to be working together to address this issue. But there's another component about the, the trend that, that really is, is even more stark, and that's the cost of the revenue. According, according to um, Shaping Our Future, um, the revenue that we'll see in the region in 2040 is about $329 million from uh, the, the way we, we develop in the trend. But the cost is over $650 million. So that's about $340 million every year above what the projections say we would get in revenue based on how we tax and, and collect funds today that we will need in 2040 just to have a sprawling place just like Charlotte and Atlanta that we don't even want. So from a cost standpoint, we've got to look into how we grow differently, or we're going to have to tax ourselves, we're going to have to do other things to account for that money, because it, we'll find the money to cover it if we have to. But the point is, I don't think any of us want to have to do that. So efforts like this, and all the efforts that many of you are involved in, are so critical to move in that different direction. So back to mobility. How do we get to work every day? 94% of us every day use a personal vehicle. 85% drive by ourselves, 9% carpool. 3% work from home, and less than a percent take public transit. This is from the Census Bureau information. So I want to ask you a question. How many of you today, and it's okay because I don't think you're going to be the only one, came here in your own vehicle? Just about everything. But if we just stop there, because you know we hear all the time, well, you know, the South Carolinians, we love our automobile and, and we love driving and all that. And I'm not saying that's not true, but there's another component of that we don't always think about. How many of you today had a different option? You could have taken another form of transportation to get here today. How many? One, two, three, four, five. That's the issue. We don't have other choices. So as we move forward, we've got to think about how can we create other choices? Not to say that every single one of us wouldn't still take our car here, but if 
all of us and others have other choices for how we get from place to place, it will have a positive impact on that land use piece that you saw. It'll have a positive impact on our community and how we're growing. So connecting our future actually was a brainchild that came out, out of shaping our future from Fred Cartwright from CUI Carter, who you'll, you'll hear from in a few minutes. And he said to me, we need to do a transportation summit. And, and we had had some conversations about moving forward around transportation as a follow-up to shaping our future, so it made sense. But I asked him the question, I said, okay, so what's the purpose? Because it's one thing to bring everybody together, but if we're just bringing people together and we're just talking about that we know we have a problem, that's all well and good, but it doesn't move the ball. It doesn't move that needle. It doesn't impact the way we need to. And so we brought together about 20 or 25 folks from across the region who are engaged in transportation. And they said that you know when they apply for grants like the Tiger Grant or other things, or they're looking at funding and, and stuff, they said they think one of the reasons that they have struggled to get some of those funds is you know they'll, they'll have their project and it may impact 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people, whatever it is. And it's a great project for that small community and important. But it wasn't part of something big. So we said, we need to create something big. We need a regional vision and strategy for reducing congestion and increasing mobility and access to transportation for a region of 1.4 million that's growing to 1.7 million. So that's how Connecting Our Future came about. And so I just put here some of the organizations and groups that are involved in transportation and there's so many more we could spend all day going through and looking at all the different things that have been done and individually they're all critical many of them are mandated by the state or the federal government many of them are initiatives that recognize that we've got to be doing different things but for the most part we kind of go down our own silos our own roads we don't connect as often as we should, even though our roads connect, our communities connect, our businesses connect. So the point of this effort is we need to connect these stakeholders and many more. We need to make sure that everybody who's working around transportation is working in the same direction. We're not saying we have to do everything together. We just want to make sure we're, we're in the same direction. We have the same vision. We have the same goals for what we're trying to accomplish. And then the individual efforts fit within movement in that direction. I was with a group in Raleigh, Durham, with the chamber of the Greenville and Spartanburg Chamber a couple weeks ago, and that's exactly what they said. They said, we don't do everything together, but we at least know the direction that we're all trying to get to. And then we move in that direction, whether it's through individual actions or collective actions, but we're moving in the same direction. So we created this effort, and it is a three-step process. And the first part is discovery uh, and understanding, which today is really the culmination of that. So you're going to see today most of our program, especially this session, the morning session, and then some of the breakouts, they're about getting a better understanding of where we are today. Because we don't know what we don't know. And some of the challenges that our leaders have around um, trying to do things differently in the area of transportation and mobility is, is tremendous. Some of the pressures come from the federal government, some from the state. I mean, you know, there are a lot of challenges. So we're, we're going to understand, we, we want to learn a little bit more about how we got to where we are. And it's no one person or one group's fault. We're here because of a long period of culmination. So how do we, you know, take a long period of time then to understand it and move forward? You know, not too long, uh, but long enough to understand why, how we got here. Today, our, we want to understand how we got to where we are and what we can maybe start doing differently and how we can work together to do things differently, to move in a different direction. Then the second phase, uh, which will start after this, is development of a regional mobility and connectivity vision and strategies. And we're in the process of hiring a consultant team that's going to help us with that. And this is about bringing all those efforts that I showed together um, earlier together to talk about, you know, what are we doing? What's working? What's not working? What are our challenges? What do we need to be doing different or better? And then how do we do that? How do we 
what, what we want to be. The, the vision I write out you know, and ask you to imagine in the beginning, that's a part of it. But there's certainly other things. We have challenges in many of our communities, and we need to understand those. Because if we can see what's being done and where the opportunities are to move forward, either in some of the same things we're doing or in different ways, um, then that gives us a play. That gives us an understanding of where we are and then how we get to where we want to be. And that comes the really the hardest part, the most important part, the rollout and then the implementation. Because you know that work is going to have to be done by all of us in the community. Um, everybody here and many others to do things. And throughout this process, this is not just going to be will not be successful if it's only done by those who are professionals in the field and our steering committee and those kind of folks. What you're going to hear later today from Carla Bello that happened in Columbus and has been successful in other places where they've been able to address their issues is they build a coalition. And that coalition includes everybody. You know, public partners, private partners, the uh, educational organizations, healthcare, many others. And we here in the upstate have a lot of those players around the tables, but we've got to get them together. And hopefully by creating a vision, creating an understanding of where we want to be and what we want for ourselves moving forward around transportation, now we have the, the understanding and we can get the coalition of folks to say, yes, I buy in, I'm going to be part of moving that. So that's what this process, that's what this effort is about. And you being here today and us doing this is critical to this effort. If we want to be successful, we have to start. And so we're starting today. So thank you all for being here. I have three presenters who I'm simply going to announce now and have them come up individually and do their presentations rather than me uh, trip up on the stage three different times. Um, the next presenter is Steve Palacier. Steve is the um, executive director of the Appalachian Council of Governments, and he's going to talk about you know all those organizations, you know what that structure is today. I said you know we don't really understand how it works. Well, Steve's going to explain it for us in 15 minutes. So here we go. Uh, no pressure, Steve. Um, then after Steve, uh, Butch Kerman is going to introduce our, our next speaker, which is Brian Keyes, the Deputy Secretary for Finance and Administration with the SEDOT. He's going to talk about the money. How does it work from a funding standpoint? Because that in, in and of itself is a challenge and something we've got to talk about as a barrier or have an opportunity. But how does that and then um, Fred Cartwright from CUI Park is going to talk about technology trends. Because things are happening. You all hopefully saw the, the autonomous vehicle downstairs. Uh, that's happening right here in the upstate. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to have that vehicle movement here in our region. So things are coming that are very different than what we've envisioned. You know, when um, Henry Ford, someone asked him after he had, had done his production and had the Model T's and the vehicles there. Someone said, how did you know how to create what people needed? And, and he said, or what people wanted. And he said, well, if I'd given them what they wanted, I'd have given them a faster horse. <laughs> I gave them what they needed, which was the automobile. So we're gonna, we need to talk about what we need. Not necessarily what we want, but what we need. And Fred's gonna talk about that. So again, thank you for being here. This is an important event, an important day, but it's the beginning. This is the beginning. And I appreciate you being here to help start this. I hope you'll be part of it as we continue on in the weeks and the months, and as Hank said, the years moving forward. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to 